Hello, SCAD bees, future SCAD bees, and SCAD alumni. Welcome to all of our distinguished guests here and everywhere. Yes, we're excited to gather yet again and share the work of our alumni atelier ambassadors with the world. I'm Tiffany Taylor. I'm the coordinator for the SCAD Alumni Atelier. And it is my honor to introduce our winter quarter 2021 virtual ambassadors, Caroline May Heidenreich and Coco Ree Lemery. In a few moments, you will hear from May, a visionary and eco-conscious fashion designer, and Coco, an award-winning scenic design artist and sustainable furniture creator. I want to encourage everyone today to utilize the chat to let us know if you have any questions about admissions, alumni programming, uh, as well as questions for May and Coco. So please do utilize that function. And you know, before we begin, I want to offer a quick thank you. Uh, years ago, SCAD president and founder Paula Wallace conceived and endowed the Alumni Atelier and her continued commitment to each and every B endures long after graduation. As one of the first ambassadors myself, I am forever warmed by her encouragement, mentorship, and friendship. SCAD truly is family. And now I'm delighted to introduce our beloved university president and founder, Paula Wallace. Oh, thank you, Tiffany. Tiffany does such a wonderful job in uh, leading this program uh, for me. And it's just a wonderful opportunity for me each quarter to reconnect with some of our alums. So when you start at SCAD, you're just really, the journey is only beginning. And um, as you uh, progress through your degree programs and graduate, then we stay in close touch with you. And I think this program in particular really honors the entrepreneurs amongst us who really want to start something new, invent something, create the creators, the makers, um, the writers, the inventors that we have as alumni. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. And it's just my honor to be able to support your work and to be your advocate in the world. Um, so thank you for joining us today. And I look forward to hearing from uh, Coco and May about their newest work that they've been doing this quarter. Thank you, everyone. Wonderful. And Coco, if you would like to begin, that would be wonderful. Sounds great. Hello, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Um, so hello, I'm Coco. Um, I want to start by just thanking everybody at SCAD. It's just been such a delight to get to know all the different departments, meet all the people. I mean, everyone, Paula, Tiffany, Matt, everyone has just been so lovely, especially in this weird virtual time. So I'm super grateful. And it's been really, really fun to do this. So I'm going to start with giving you some background on myself. Like Tiffany said, um, I was a scenic artist and designer out of Chicago for a decade um, before I switched. And I did everything from very large scale events to um, puppet theater and children's theater, to comedy stages that are still up today, to um, Muppet movies, all sorts of work went into that hundreds and thousands of shows and hours um, put into sort of these larger than life um, very dramatic um, designs. And in 2017, I decided that I was going to switch my focus and really use SCAD as a moment to pivot. And I started to focus on the smaller things. So scaling down, went to get my furniture masters. And um, after I left SCAD, I started working for Jonathan Adler, where I was the head of all furniture, lighting, and accessories. So accessories, including all functional accessories for your home when you think trays and bowls and um, fire equipment, things like that. It can be everything in your home. And that really started me on um, a journey and a path of understanding um, you know, what is a really manufacturable form versus what is a more organic and unmanufacturable form. And now I am currently the head of lighting for William Sonoma's Pottery Barn brand. 
And I do everything, including all of our outdoor assortment, everything that comes out of there is, is mine and all of our crystal. And um, in addition to that, I've got this little baby company called Studio Cloak. And Studio Cloak's aim is to, I want Studio Cloak to be all the things that I can't design at Williams Sonoma. And I want Williams Sonoma to be all the things I can't design with Studio Cloak, right? So what does that mean? That means um, um, a big celebration into like really sculptural organic forms, right? Um, it, these were, this was the first collection that I did with Studio Cloak that I actually, while I was studying at SCAD in Hong Kong, actually designed these forms while I was there. I was so inspired by Hong Kong and the big looming structures of Hong Kong. And I, I just fell in love. And this was the collection that came out of that experience. Then the second collection that I came out with was what I'm calling Sugar Hill. I was living in New York City, working for Jonathan Adler, and then the pandemic hit. And um, my, I made this deal with my husband that I wouldn't collect trash during a pandemic on the streets of New York City, which you all know that it's all out on the streets. So it's so, oh, it's so tantalizing. And so um, what I did was I started picking up glass on the ground, hiding it in my pockets. Once I had a big enough pile at home, I said, honey, I wanna make these lights that are covered in all of this glass. So what I did is I usually I weld up my forms and then on top of them, I sculpt. And the mix that I use is um, a kind of a combination between um, paper clay and paper um, and plaster. So it's like this interesting combination it allows me to use even more recycled materials. So that's really the, a big focus for me in the name of the game, especially traveling to these countries, you know, as a furniture designer, I luckily get to travel, well, did get to travel to all these beautiful countries and it's really been an eye-opening experience for me to want to make things in a more sustainable way and really putting an emphasis on that. And so these are, this is the little collection that came out of that. So with the project that I've been doing for the Atelier program, I've really been focusing in two veins. So now I'm in San Francisco and I'm really inspired by the landscape here and what that means and how to merge it. So one part of it are the Vallejo vessels is what I'm calling them. And um, they're really, like I said, trying to, I'm trying to focus on that super organic form. I'm really interested in that exclusivity, that bespoke element, right? So really not making more than one of something um, and then operating in a more sustainable way. So I've been doing a lot of experiments with the best way to kind of fire things with while using trash to a certain extent. And the, in addition to the vessels, I've also been working on a collection of lamps. For forever, I wanted to do something with a rounded tube. And so that is kind of like found, these are very early iterations of this. So please note that this is not finished, um, but still very exciting. Um, focusing on, again, those organic forms, but then also thinking about, um, you know, zoom lighting today, right? And um, it's so funny because I've designed zoom lighting at all these other companies. And they're set to launch and come out onto the market in the holiday of next year, right? Because as a furniture designer, you work a year out. But as a small business, one of the things when, because I'm all just constantly thinking about what can, what can my small business do that I can't do elsewhere? And I can respond to the market a lot faster. And so I'm trying to like engage that and indulge that. And that has been playing with these very odd sculptural forms which I can actually show you. I don't know if you guys can see me. But anyway, so there's some, I've got them behind me, right? And um, one of the things that's really great about these sculptural forms is, okay, so the LED bulbs that I used um, have the ability to totally dim or change colors, which is wonderful. And then the profile is, um, thinner, which is something that I definitely wanted because I feel like I like having desk space. And then I did them at varying heights. So I felt like people who are looking for something, sometimes they need something that goes over their laptop. And then sometimes they need something that maybe is to the left or to the right of them. So really thinking about, I really tried to engage with these in a way that I couldn't for the other, the other lights that I was designing on the market. Um, and then of course, I've also got, I don't know if you guys can see this, 
but I've also got some of the pieces early on in the process and the unfire forms, um, which have been really fun and lovely to work on. And they are very lightweight, but very organic. Um, and so it's really been um, just so lovely to kind of just dive in. And um, I'm gonna keep going with this project. And again, I just wanna say thank you to everyone, even for just joining this call today. Um, it's been a total delight and um, just a pleasure to be able to do it from afar. Does anybody have any questions for me? <laughs> Thank you so much, Coco. And, you know, I saw a couple of questions come through and after May presents, uh, we'll definitely address those. I especially would love to hear your response to Cy Twombly, possible influence. Um, <laughs> But yes, I think we'll have May uh, present and then we'll open it up to a QA. and a All right, sounds great. Thank you so much, Coco. Beautiful work. Love your work, Coco. Thank you. Hello, I'm May. Coco, beautiful work. I'm loving the lamps. Those are insane and I need one right now. She's my so. sister, my soul sister. <laughs> Trade, so. <laughs> Wonderful. Hello. Thank you guys for having me. This is such an honor and privilege to be um, a virtual alumni ambassador. It's the only way I could have done it right now. I'm, I've been working full time out in Los Angeles. Um, I've worked for a long time for Madonna and have served as her creative assistant, executive assistant, costume design, just honestly doing everything. Um, but it's wonderful to do this virtually. It's really expanding my vision for online accessibility to my garments that I make. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen. So just to jump right into the Atelier project. Inspiration being honestly a rediscovering of self, reconnecting with myself, and really just expanding my mind to connecting with Mother Earth, connecting with the moon, connecting with the sun. Um, the medicine wheel of Andean shamanism is north, south, east, west, and there's a lot of beautiful symbolism there, and it was very inspirational to me. Actually, I've been studying virtually, so it's beautiful to see this inspiration come through in this collection. Um, I was thinking more casual meets streetwear, also purification, cleansing. I'm always burning incense, so it's very much in the vein of the inspiration is cleansing, purifying. I love the sandal reference as well with socks. I'm thinking of painting some sand, some Birkenstocks. And yeah, these images are also vintage images from the 1800s of space. So again, very inspirational. Um, these are just some rough illustrations of the okay. custom uh, button down shirts that I'm creating. I'm wearing one right now. So I've been painting fabric, painting uh, silk and I have a tailor I'm working with who's creating the collared button down shirts. I'm wearing one right now and also have this one here to show you, which I really love. I think they turned out really cool. So I've just, I've been going, I've painted over 50 yards of silk, I feel like. Um, also a pair of silk boxers. and making those. So these are the shirts I use, the scraps to have some masks made. So it's really exciting to be able to offer custom shirting. Um, that will be something I include on the site, on my website, Shop Make Couture. And so this leads me to the pajamas. I'm doing a collaboration with a pajama company in New York called Olatz. And these are their 
staple nightshirt pajama set and nightgown. And they will be making them in the painted silk. So I'm really excited to see these pieces and actually have an opportunity to work with a factory and another company who's interested in doing custom online ordering. So it's a great little collaboration. And these are some of the fabrics that I'll use for those pieces for the nightgown. This is a stretch silk, it's really beautiful fabric. And I'm starting to drape um, my collection I did it as a senior at SCAD was entirely draped. So I'm happy to touch back into this part of my design process. Um, I really love to just get with the fabric, start manipulating it, and it, it helps me to design actually. So I'm loving getting back into this and I'm going to continue forward with making hand draped evening gowns out of this, these materials as well. Um, this piece behind me here is what I plan to use for the puff jacket. It's also really beautiful silk that I've been hand painting and experimenting with. So I'm excited to see how this translates into a jacket because once you, it, it looks one way as a whole piece of fabric, but once it's cut up and put together as, as I've done with these shirts, it looks totally different. So it's exciting. And this is a jogger and um, sweater set that I wanna do out of cashmere. I found this wonderful company. They have a sustainability aspect to their production, which they'll use the leftover yarns from previous productions. So I'm working to get those samples made out here in LA, which will be really exciting. And these are just some rough sketches. I've been really inspired by my Scottish ancestry and um, wanted to do a kilt, some trousers and some shorts. So I just did a little rough sketch of those. And looking ahead with this project, I have these large scale, they're like 12 feet by five feet, uh, raw canvas paintings that I painted in Harlem when I had a studio there last year, pre-pandemic. And so I'm really excited to get these oil paintings out and I would love to um, put them on a large paneling or um, this piece, specifically the one with the X, I want to create um, outerwear pieces with. So I think I'll be able to get a few coats out of these large scale paintings, which I would love to have just art piece outerwear. And this was a little reference to how I imagine and, in, in, you know, the installation of them being kind of like a, a room divider even. And that is it for, for this, but I, I was inspired as well to share a little preview of, of my senior collection, which is, you know, I think it's interesting to see where, where I came from with my senior collection. It was very much a different world. 2009, I graduated SCAD and I was very much inspired by uh, military materials. And so that was a big part of my collection was finding military materials as well as deconstructing uh, those materials, hardware, fabrics. And I also tested out making fabrics out of plastic bags. And um, that was actually really interesting. So these were just inspirations and the sketches. This photograph was, I believe it was shown in the Hong Kong um, gallery. This is a runway shot of the parachute gown from that collection. Yeah, I'll share that link with you guys. And- um, Oh yeah, everyone would wanna look. see parachute gowns. <laughs> Excellent, yes. So I'm super excited to bring evening gowns back into this. Um, I'll have these tailored pieces, which I can take online orders, which is amazing. They'll be able to pick their size. And um, that's something new for me as a 
as a designer who primarily works with the client one-on-one. I have to fit everything usually with the evening gowns, which after I graduated SCAD for the, for five years after that, I lived in Atlanta and did evening gowns, wedding gowns, all types of custom pieces, mostly out of parachutes. So it was a beautiful start of my career. I found that material as a senior at SCAD and I'm just really grateful for the experience to come back and expand this, you know, this passion that I have to paint and applying that painting to the, to the fashion side of my heart as well. And also to influence, influence, you know, the inspiration of what's going on in this world and raising the consciousness and elevating the awareness. And I feel like I'm having, I'm really having a good time bringing that inspiration to life and painting it on the material. So I'm looking forward to sending the puff to President Wallace to try on. <laughs> oh, wow. The puff. Oh, wow. I will try it on. I'll send you a picture. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you, President Wallace. I appreciate it. And um, much love to you guys. It's been an honor and a privilege. And that canvas that you did in uh, New York, you should like do a lot more with that, I think. I think so. It's, I'm really excited for the opportunity to continue painting uh, large scale canvases. I've always been inspired by graffiti and street art as well as street wear. So it's kind of interesting to bring that together and util utilizing a really comfortable fabric like silk. It's, it looks really fresh and it's also very comfortable to, to wear. So it's exciting to fuse the two. Yeah. I'm happy to answer any questions if anyone has. Beautiful, May. And, you know, I just want to thank you and Coco for all the energy. You both have such generous hearts and all of your engagements with our classrooms and the one on one mentoring, um, those experiences, they're so special. So thank you both so much for that, in addition to the work that you created. And I believe now Bradley Bowers, a former alumni Atelier ambassador, uh, will conduct the Q&A. And there are so many great questions in this chat. So thank you all for contributing. Hello. Yes, I've been taking notes. So um, I'll be reading off those questions. But really quickly, um, I'm Bradley Bowers. I was an alumni Atelier ambassador or participant, rather, in 2016. And that was the first time I started playing with clay in the studio. And that was thanks to President Wallace and that opportunity. And all these years later, I'm still doing it and working across a variety of mediums that you and uh, or May and Coco are also in. So it's nice to see uh, the versatility amongst SCADIs. <laughs> so getting to the questions, I think this one, this is a question that I have personally. And so since I'm doing this, I'll start with my question. Um, how do you both divide yourselves, Coco, specifically for you, how do you divide yourself mentally from your Pottery Barn design persona versus your cloak design persona? And is there a particular way you do that? And the same for you, May, because I'm not sure if you're still working with Madonna, but how do you decide what's going to stay for you and what's an ideal thing for another type of person or another client? So whoever yeah. wants to jump on that first. I'll just jump in. Um, so, I mean, working remotely and transitioning to working remotely has been like lovely for me because it's required me not to be in an office. And usually the way I work is I 3D model and then I process a render queue. Um, and so what happens is I'll do work, I'll do a bunch of meetings. And once I process a render queue, I'll kind of jump back over to my work table. And it's just so refreshing to have that time where I'm not on the computer all day. I think it makes me a better designer I'm so lucky to be able to kind of jump between the two. I think that when I was working in an office full time, it was very challenging for me and I was kind of in a dark hole. And so now being able to work with my hands and mull something over and go back has just been a gift. It's just been such a lovely gift. So for me, I really do pop between. If I'm stuck on something one place, I'll kind of shift to the other and I'll shift back. 
Um, and it's a lot of very long hours, like very long hours, but, um, but yeah, it's really just about that balance and honestly getting frustrated in one area helps me go back to the other in a lot of ways. And May, what was um, your retort or response to that same thing of how do you split yourself creatively? It is a challenge, but it's, it can also be very inspirational because some of the things I do at work are things I would never do in my creative space. So it has, uh, I have learned a lot about art, even just fine art that I've had to uh, manage and track and know where it was and things like that. Um, so it's been incredible, just the different level of responsibility has shown me in my creative side how to better time manage myself in a way. It's like sometimes I have to work a full day and be on set or be at the house or whatever work, whatever crazy project is going on and then come home and find my peace and find time for painting. And, um, and sometimes those worlds cross and, and I have an opportunity to say, hey, I'm check, check out this illustration or look at this painting I just did. Or, and I often give her pieces that I made or uh, painted and she's very receptive. She's always like, oh, let's get it framed or this is amazing. And she'll, she'll wear things. She's worn a parachute skirt as well one year for her birthday. So it, it's been wonderful to have an encouraging um, mentor like boss, but also um, she's encouraged me to, when we were in Portugal for a year, she was like, you need to be graffitiing. You should go out because it's this crazy graffiti culture. And so it was just really encouraging and inspiring to believe in myself enough to uh, show her my work or show others my work where maybe in the past I would have just kept it to myself. But nowadays everyone's sharing so much. So it's like, it, it's cool to be myself and, and, and fuse those worlds together, you know, and say, this is what I'm doing, but also do my job as well. <laughs> I like that. And I think that's a huge part of being a creative is not every day is it always for yourself. It's oftentimes a juggling act. So I'm glad I'm not alone and having split personality. Um, sure. We have a question from another alumni ambassador, Madison in New York. I love I'm doing this like I'm doing like a, a radio show. Madison in New York has a question. Um, for you, Coco, where does the name, is it Vallejo or Vallejo? Vallejo. Okay. Yeah, so each name comes from the region where they were designed. So Victoria's Peak was obviously designed in Hong Kong. And then Sugar Hill is actually kind of a small unknown neighborhood in Harlem that people don't use it as like a reference, but that is the place where I collected the glass. And then Vallejo, and oh, excuse me. And Vallejo is, from California. And then I have a question from Any Lee, um, who wants to know, and actually I, I, this was initially for Coco, but I think it would be great for both of you. What's your ideal environment or space where you want your work to reside? Residential, commercial? Um, and I guess maybe the adjustment for you would be, what's that ideal client uh, who would be kind of giving a new life to these garments? So I guess whoever wants to jump in first. I can jump in and say, I imagine the, the showcasing of the work to be in a gallery-like space, but something that when you walk in, you feel like you're in a sacred space. Perhaps there's, there's a vibe, you know, like there's incense, there's, there's music or someone playing uh, an instrument and just a calling to for everyone to take a breath and to be reconnect with yourself. I want that to be the energy of walking into the space and seeing the work. It's like this relaxed, peaceful vibe. Um, and ultimately, I think if someone's interested in a garment that would be on display, um, I, I think it would be the ideal person who is, is just like we are, who has to be on screen, but also wants to have, feel comfort as well as feel style. Um, 
So I think ideally I would love to, to show the work as a collective and really make it an experience for the person who walks through to see it because I feel everything is so rapidly shared and, and we can just look for days at art and fashion and it, it's just nice to share it in person and even if it is shared in a virtual way I still would love to, for it to embody that energy virtually <laughs> and I'll go ahead and jump in I think we all love um, a hospitality project because they pay that good money um, but I actually just love my my pieces being in someone's space being kind of more intimate with them it's really exciting that the idea that someone would kind of mix up their look or have like a bold element. And it means so much that someone would kind of bring you into their home in that way, right? And so I feel like it's magic for me to be able to, to just be in someone's space in that way. Perfect. And then to piggyback off that, I think we'll get a little technical. Uh, there's been quite a few questions made on your dyeing or painting technique. Are you using reactive dyes? Is this like oil or acrylic paint? How are you going about uh, adding the text and color to your pieces? I, I'm using silk paint. So I'm just applying it with a paintbrush um, straight to the silk. I tested a lot of pieces and the technique that I'm finding is just going straight the brush to the uh, material and it is a heat set, steam set paint. So with the iron, a steam iron, it sets the paint and it doesn't um, create a texture or anything. The fluidity of the silk still remains as if it's not even painted, which is really exciting because I actually had never painted on silk. This project gave me that opportunity to expand a bit and say, you know, I want this to be beautiful and wearable, but paint can sometimes create a texture and a hardness to the material. So the silk, I was really drawn and inspired by, um, by the silk pajama feeling. And um, so yeah, it's this silk paint. And on, on my canvases, I use oil primarily, sometimes charcoal. Perfect. And I like that. That's a really good point to make about the paint not making a new texture or uh, like um, impeding the flexibility of the fabric. And mm -hmm. then Coco, similarly for you, this is for me, but I'll pretend that somebody else asked it. Okay. Um, with your clay pieces, are you hand building everything? Is there some slip casting involved? And where did those techniques come to you from? Since I believe earlier you said you had studied furniture design, so did you embark on clay just because you wanted to, or was it kind of already in your design DNA? Yeah, so the, the real story is that I started working with clay. I would do figure sculpting. I would do fast figure sculpting about a decade ago. And then when I was in Atlanta, I um, joined a clay studio and it was like my first quarter of SCAD. Um, and then I, tragically our, our home burnt down during that time period and we went to Savannah. And what I did was I stopped at the clay studio and I grabbed my clay equipment. And somehow it's become really special to me because it's like my studio was destroyed and I lost everything. So it was like those tools became like this, I don't know, like the only thing I had left. So revisiting it as a form and it is all coil built, it's all hand built. Or I'm trying to stay away from all casting. I don't even want the pieces to be like castable, you know? Um, so, but revisiting those tools and diving back in has been so um, rewarding because they have such significance to me. So, um, but yes, everything is coil built. Everything is hand built. I'm doing some with porcelain, some with a heavier grog. Obviously I can't raccoon fire the porcelain. So it's really, now I'm on a journey of firing um, and excited to come out the other end. And then I know earlier we had a few questions on inspiration. And so for Coco, people wanted to know, uh, Cy Twombly, are you a fan? And then May, are you influenced or, and you kind of already answered this a little bit uh, by talking about Portugal's graffiti culture, 
but are you looking at graffiti culture or are you just saying this is my this is just what's coming out of me and i'm not necessarily trying to fit into any particular uh established genre or category and so i guess coco uh since you're on my screen i guess you'll uh respond first <laughs> okay sounds great um i mean i love side only but i was really trying to reference female sculptors like barbara hepworth simone best valentine schlegel i've been really interested in kind of diving back looking at female sculptors, looking what they've done. They've offered so much to the world and they've been so largely unrecognized that that's really been um, a large focus of at least what I'm reading and ruminating on, you know what I mean? I'll jump in and, and answer your question about graffiti inspiration. Uh, I, I was very inspired by just the amount of graffiti that was everywhere in Lisbon it's very much accepted in the culture that this is happening and it's it's insane. I mean, there's some really far out styles where um, Veals is one of the artists, he actually distresses the wall and creates um, a face or an eye or he, it's very beautiful Veals. Um, <clears throat> so he was definitely an artist he does very large scale. So I think I was just inspired to put my art out that in that way. It's like, I don't reference it for my own style. I just reference it, reference it in the way that I would like to show my work. And I would love to do a huge wall or of course, share a message, you know, share a message mm -hmm. with the world. And I feel that's what a lot of graffiti artists do. It's they're sharing their message. And as an artist, amongst a pool, you know, a huge world of people who have so many messages. I just think it really takes it back to like an old school era that used to inspire me as well. Like Keith Haring, Basquiat, you know, in the eighties, it was just like very rough and raw and in the subway. And um, it's not the way in New York city anymore, really, but it's such an inspiration for me just to show work in that way and just to put it out on the wall and know that it's going to get torn down or painted over. It's, it's very like fast. And um, so it's inspired me in that way, but it's interesting because I I've geared my direction for my paint application to be a bit rougher um, because I don't want it to look planned. I guess maybe that graffiti side has that element of like just getting it up and letting it be a little rough, um, at least for me. So I, it's definitely inspiring, but I feel I want it, I want to have my own style uh, there so that it, it stands very much out as, as my own. And because everyone has their own hand and their own style. So it's, it's really awesome to see. Yeah, it, it feels the one that uses, there's someone who uses a jackhammer to kind of like, is that the same person? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. his, his process is really interesting and it looks more like a deterioration of the building, but you can mm -hmm. see like this beautiful, perfect right. figure. And it's just incredible. Um, it, Lisbon's a very old city, so it has a lot of buildings that are falling down and, um, so I could see why, you know, how he was inspired to do that. You don't want to vandalize. I mean, I don't want to vandalize any of those beautiful buildings, but sometimes there's metal siding that they put up and, you know, same in New York City, they do a bunch of boards and things like that. So if I ever did any graffiti, it was always on something that was going to be torn down. It wasn't on an actual um, property. So it's, it's really cool that they're so accepting of that as well in Portugal. It's really, it's really a culture. Um, it's definitely has its own vibe. I was happy to experience that. And I think that that's, uh, it's, it's nice of you to be aware of kind of what the impact of something can have, but still be like, look, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna destroy anything, but I need you to know I'm here. Um, Wheat pasting as well, I started doing because I didn't want to apply spray paint onto a surface. Mm -hmm. Wheat paste deteriorates over time. So it's just being a little mindful about it and not being aggressive with a spray can or something. It's it's like sticking a piece of paper on the wall. Just 
it will deteriorate in a few days or someone will tear it down. But uh, another artist that I met along the way, her name's Miss Me, and she does a lot of cool graffitis that are wheat pasted. So they just deteriorate. But it, it's inspiring to see that artists, you know, they're able to express their message in, in such a different way. And I really respect those that do it because it is hard. <laughs> Now I have a, so we're going to take a slight turn. Um, usually people want advice from artists or creatives that either they share a university affiliation with or a material that they both use. Um, I find advice to be a troublesome thing. So instead of asking you all for advice to other people, what qualities did you already possess previously that have helped you with your career so far that you didn't know were going to become a help? Does that make sense? Or is that really a loopy question? It makes sense. Okay, so I guess Mace, is, again, your face is up on my screen. If you could tackle that first. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I won't repeat it because I'll confuse myself. So a quality that I already had that I didn't know I had, but that I know I have. Um, well, and then a quality that you didn't know was going to, I guess I'll say it easier, a quality you possessed that you didn't know was going to come in handy that really helped your career continue to grow. Honestly, resourcefulness and being resourceful in the experiences that I've had, um, you know, in my career uh, at SCAD, there was, a big collapse and recession and everything changed in New York City and all of the jobs changed and the whole world seemed to change at that moment. And I had to think on my feet and use what budget I had, which wasn't much and be resourceful. So I found mosquito net, hardware, uh, parachutes. I, I painted on a canvas gown. I just used the materials that were inspiring to me that were around me and that that I could find. And I think that that's really played such a huge role in my entire career, even working for Madonna being, you know, around the clock with someone working for them, I had to be resourceful to express my creativity as well and be like, okay, I have a sketchbook. I have, I remember we had this thing of oil pastels and that's like how it all started. I had this tray of oil pastels and I would sit there and in between, um, in, in between things, when I had a little break, I would just use my time and it, you know, to create when I could. So yeah, just being resourceful. And Coco, what is yeah, that quality me, of yours? It's two, kind of two things. One is a tremendous amount of grit, right? I'm a career transitioner and it was shocking to the system to kind of be in that, especially as a, a young woman right? I, I was used to my identity before and transitioning that and people kind of knew who I was. Transitioning careers was really difficult. It, uh, it was hard to see the way that people look at you and judge you not knowing your work. And it was like very shocking to my system. Um, and just being able to persevere despite the fact that there were so many times where I was like, let me just go back. Let me just go back where I'm comfortable, right? And, um, and then I think the, the second part is I kind of thought, you know, I've had this insatiable curiosity about everything around me for so long. And I kind of thought that as I got older, that would kind of fade away and I would know more things, right? I would, I would be more aware, I would know more, and so I wouldn't have it as much. But it's weird in my third decade, it's just continued to grow. I'm just so curious. I just... I'm so wanting to play and experiment. And I'm so excited for that to grow with my age in so many ways. It's just so lovely that that hasn't faded away. And I think that that being kind of like a, a young quirk that I've continued to carry with me has been um, hugely helpful. That is the perfect segue to the next one, which is what type of, not necessarily ad advice, but encouragement would you offer to the next wave of scatties coming into the creative world. Because like both of you mentioned, we, we're in a completely different landscape than we've known for quite some time. So how would you 
because it's it doesn't it doesn't look exciting right now so it's like how do you say don't give up push through it persevere how would you go about that and coco you're on my screen so we'll okay. start with you um, I think it's a very exciting time. It's a very exciting time to be a furniture designer because everyone's buying furniture at their, in their home. Everyone's being displaced right now. So, and the benefit is that if you're going to the corporate side where you're looking to get a job in corporate America, everyone's at their computer. So it's really up to you to kind of do the due diligence and follow up. When I was applying places, I was doing three points of contact for every application I would sign up. So I'd apply on LinkedIn, I would apply on Indeed, and I would, I would like stalk their LinkedIn account, try to find your email address. I would guess email addresses. I would say, hey, I just applied on this platform. I want you to know that I submitted this. I'm attaching it again here. I was hungry and being hungry is really, really important. On the opposite side of things, uh, being a small business owner, I think it's really important to understand that you're never gonna compete with these big companies. So it's what can you do as a small business owner that they can't do? right? You can respond to the market faster. You can do more trend-driven things that um, you can be bolder, that they, they can't do that, right? Um, you have the ability to operate in a more sustainable way. You're not going to be shipping crates from China. So you have the ability to really embrace that and indulge that. Um, and I think it's really fun and exciting to be able, when you step back and you get to look at what can I do as a company that another company can't do, there's a lot of potential and you start to see lots of area for opportunity and it becomes exciting rather than daunting. But yes, I have lots of things on that, but I'm gonna throw it over to May now. <laughs> Could you repeat the question again? Yes, so it's the time that we are kind of existing in creatively is very different. So what type of encouragement would you offer uh, to that next wave of SCADIs coming into this new landscape of creativity and art. I love what Coco said about don't try to compete with the big industry companies and being able to do things that they can't do. I love that. I think that's so well said. And also for me, uh, it, what, what I've told to Anne Hammond, who is who I've been mentoring, it's just you know, be yourself and explore and give yourself the permission to make mistakes and to make things that you don't like. And eventually you'll start to like what you're making if you just keep pushing through that funny period of like, am I good? Am I not good? What can I do? And just, yeah, be yourself, be in touch with yourself take that space for yourself because we are in this very fast world. And there's a lot of competition like online and all the social media we didn't have that when I was a student it was just like Facebook and that was only for college kids so now it's the whole world and I think that can be very overwhelming so in a way it's unplugging from that getting in touch with yourself and and giving yourself chances multiple chances to make mistake after mistake with drawing, sketching, whatever your medium is, photography, know the difference. It, say, is my work, is this looking good or is it looking bad? Know the difference if, if you like it or if you don't. And, and just be, be gentle with yourself. I feel like the world can be very harsh and the art world can be very competitive. And it's like, like how can I ever be uh, that, you know, like a famous artist? And it's like, the point is to discover your talent and discover what what you can offer to this to this world and i really encourage the youth to just take that time to breathe and to get in touch with yourself and and apply what inspires you to your medium and be forgiving with yourself don't judge yourself so much it's not a competition if you're you're in college your work's going to grow and become better each year. By the time I was in my senior year, I could see my style starting to develop. And had I not made it through all four years, I would have never known what, I, what I'm capable of. So I really encourage students to kind of stick with it and break through those uncomfortable, tough days where it's, it seems impossible. And yeah, just be forgiving with yourself. 
I think that is probably one of the most beautifully said things to be gentle with yourself. I, I, I pre, I'm, I'm learning that as well. So thank Please you. Um, I would like to say thank you to both of you. The Q&A part has concluded, but I do want to do a roll call because we have quite a few previous ambassadors here. Um, let me make sure I'm not forgetting anyone. So I'm going to go through the list and I would love, I don't know if it's possible for everyone to just say hi um, or at least wave, but we've got Madison Hamburg in, in the house. We have Sauda Mitchell, Melina Omut, Gabriella Iancu, Annie Lee Parker, Sam Lassiter, Tina Summers, Ann Royan, Matt Nickley, and of course, me. Um, so I'm glad that we, I'm glad I've met the two of you. This has been fantastic. Um, so please, I, I don't know how we could all get in touch with each other. Um, oh yeah, there's also Casey Willis. Um, is there like a way for us to all be able to exchange information? Cause I think it would be quite a few of us are in New York. Um, wait, Grace is saying, yes, there is a way. Um, oh, May has just put in her, uh, okay, perfect. I'll find you on Instagram. But yeah, I'm just really, I'm, I'm loving the work. I'm super inspired. I am also excited to see people like Coco who are making career transitions like myself where you don't feel limited. So um, I don't know if anybody else wants to say hi. Oh wait, everyone's typing. Hi. <laughs> um, so yes, thank you so much. Thank you, President Wallace for making all of this possible and for believing in us and pushing us when sometimes we didn't know we should push ourselves. So I don't wanna to get too sappy on here, but I do wanna let the ambassadors, uh... yeah, guys, stop typing, start, turn on the, uh... everybody. Okay, Grace is telling me every ambassador has a minute to say something. So um, get on there, turn off those keyboards and turn on those mics. Well, I'll start. I'm Sam Lassiter. I was uh, studied sculpture. Um... And I graduated in 2015, and I was a uh, an alumni atelier in 2016 in Lacoste, where I did the, I don't know if anyone's seen pictures of the big puppet processional uh, for the town of Lacoste. Hi, everyone. I'm Gabriela. So great to see you, President Wallace. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I graduated from SCAD in 2015 with an MFA in photography. And in 2017, I was an alumni atelier ambassador in Atlanta and Savannah. And during my residency, which has been an outstanding time for me, I have created a digital installation that uniquely combined still life photography with motion and sound design. And it has been an absolutely blast. Thank you so much. Hey there, I'll go next since I have to run, but I am Casey Willis, um, graduated from SCAD in 2013 from the MFA Sound Design Program, um, was the Alumni Atelier Ambassador, one of them, uh, last fall. Um, currently working on several podcast projects. Um, one of them is You Heard Me Right, which is a co-production between my production company Could Be Pretty Cool and Spotify. So that's available everywhere um, podcasts are. Um, my alumni atelier project was a podcast called White Angle that explores race and perspective in documentary filmmaking. And congratulations to the Winter Ambassadors. And I hope to connect with you all soon. I can go. Uh, I'm Madison Hamburg. I graduated from SCAD in 2014, and I was a alumni atelier ambassador in 2016. Um, my project uh, for the atelier program was a documentary about the my my mother's death. Um, she was murdered 10 years or 11 years ago now. Um, honestly was the turning point for my career and my project, which is now a, a short a mini series on HBO um, that came out last November. Um, it's great to see this amazing work, Coco and May, and best of luck with everything. It's good to see you too, uh, President Wallace as well. So proud of all of you. I'll jump in really quick. Um, so my name is Annie Lee Parker. I graduated from a master's in furniture in 2018, I believe, and was able to start a business 
While I was in school, I am in New York now. I have a studio in furniture and lighting, and it's been incredible um, to have the team and the resources from SCAD and the support from President Wallace, and I don't know, I just feel really lucky. Um, and Madison and I actually <laughs> reside in the same building, so it's really fun to have like all this good alumni support around in New York. Um, but yeah, it was really great to see the work, Coco and May, and I wish y'all really good luck. Hello, I guess I'll go next. Um, my name is Molina. I graduated in 2013 um, with an MFA in illustration, and I was an alumni ambassador in um, 2017. Uh, where I created this um, whimsical experience um, of Savannah. I uh, had a project where that had two components of um, fine art and surface design, uh, where I did uh, life-size paintings inspired by Savannah. And I also created fabric that I used to upholster furniture. I currently reside in Romania where I'm freelancing uh, for editorial market um, for newspapers and magazines in the US. Um, and um, I've been involved with uh, SCAD through um, different um, events, through q &A sessions with the students in the illustration department. And congratulations, Coco and um, May, good luck. <laughs> I'll uh, hop in. Hey, everybody. I'm Matt Nickley. Coco and May, I'm so jealous of you guys for the ambassadorship. is so darn cool. Uh, me and Eni and Madison are actually in the same cohort in fall 2016, so it's really beautiful to see them. Um, I graduated my MFA in performing arts, but most of my work's actually in writing now. And I came back as an atelier to continue sort of the show that I was working on as a grad student, and we ended up with that, with along with 100 students, uh, ended up winning a, uh, uh, a college Emmy for the production. And now I'm actually back at SCAD um, and am a writer in the executive media office. And also speaking of podcasts, you should all check out On Creativity with your president and founder, Paula Wallace, uh, that I helped produce and host for. And actually our dear friend, Madison Hamburg and his producing partner, Solomon, are actually gonna be guests on the podcast at some point in season five. And so stay tuned. Uh, but it's great to see everyone. And congratulations again, Coco and May. That was awesome. So much. Hi there. Um, Tina Summers, a graduate, um, graphic design, 1990, um, was part of the Spring Atelier, actually with Bradley Bowers. How we hate Bradley. Um, back in the spring of 2016, um, did a collection of hospitality collages, kind of combining graphic design and photography. Um, currently working with the city of Bridgeport where I live on a hospitality project and kind of getting some of these places um, booming again because of COVID and um, you know the dining and, and hotels have been really hit. So enjoying that and um, very inspiring um, presentations, both Coco and May. Um, I, I love both of your work and your approaches. Beautiful, and is Sada with us as well? Hi everybody, um, I'm Sada Mitchell. Um, I participated in the alumni ambassadorship, uh, alumni atelier ambassadorship in the spring of 2017, where my project consisted of 10 linoleum prints that were embedded with QR codes that linked viewers to archival collection materials that um, I digitized after working in archives here in the city of Savannah. Um, since my ambassadorship, I have also now joined uh, the staff of SCAD and I am now the archives and special collections librarian. So I now have the opportunity to work with students and get them excited about archives and primary resources as well. And since then, um, I'm I'm working on my upcoming solo exhibition at the Jepson, where you will see Finding Aid Again, my project from the Alumni Atelier in the format of an artist book. So congratulations, Coco and May, and thank you so much, President Wallace, for the opportunities. I love for you guys to help each other and to connect and just to support each other's work too. I love seeing that. I'll do my, uh, my one minute, because I forgot I let everybody else go and didn't say anything myself. Um, but I was a part of the Atelier 2016, um, where I embarked on some digitized or digitally inspired ceramics 
Um, and that got me inspired to start playing with ceramics in the studio, which I was just in Mexico uh, over this last week, exploring new ways to use artisan craftsmanship and digital fabrication together to make another ceramics collection. So it stays with you. So I'm, I'm really excited to be a part of the, the Atelier family. And I genuinely can't think of a project I've done where I didn't collaborate with at least one other SCAD uh, alumni. So it's, it's like a family, not just to say it, but genuinely, you really do end up seeing each other again and again and in positive ways. So thank you. Thank you, Coco. Thank you, May. Honestly, that was really exciting stuff. Didn't know what to expect. So uh, it was really fun. So thank you so much. Thank you, President Wallace. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Grace. Y'all are amazing. Thank you so much for being such a great moderator, Bradley. Thank you. I'm a faculty at SCAD. I don't know if you can hear me or if I'm muted or not, but I just yeah. want to tell you all that this was so inspirational and I am so excited about sharing this with my students and that, um, you know, I, I love the uh, opportunity to, uh, to share with my students what happens after SCAD. And I, I, I just think this was so phenomenal and I'm so excited about sharing this with my, my kids, my students. So thank you so much to everybody. Thank you, Deb. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much, Deborah. And um, I believe Anne is with us. Anne, did you want to say hello, one of our ambassadors? Sure, hi, I'm Anne. Um, I have an MFA from SCAD in writing. I spent my time in Savannah and I was in Lacoste in the winter of 2018 um, where I did a writing project that was Provence through the senses and it was magical and incredible. Um, and I've been aware of all of you and of this community, and I've been aware of your work, but never in a way that's as close to home as right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, it's so inspiring, just like to start the week and the month and the springtime off um, with the recognition of this community and the talent and the power, and we've each had unique experiences, but they've all intersected. So I thank you, May and Coco, I am, my cup is runneth over with just inspiration for today, um, beautiful presentations. And then for everybody else, it's such a gift to, to all be together in this platform today. So um, this has been awesome for everybody. Thank you all and Grace and Tiffany, and as always, President Wallace. Thank you so much, Anne. And you know, just bearing witness to May and Coco's projects and hearing these updates from our ambassadors Looking at the programming that President Wallace has created for alumni, I think back to when I was 17 in Ogden, Utah, and my high school art teachers told me, you have to go to SCAD um, because look at how they treat their alumni. Look at what their alumni are doing. And those two things have never run truer uh, than today with the additional programming that President Wallace has added. We have Alumni Atelier. We have a new branch of Atelier called Alumni Atelier Associates. And so you have that available to you upon graduation where you can come and stay, like come back home to SCAD, uh, you know, have a rest, but with an apartment and a studio space. And then of course we have Alumni Atelier Ambassadors like May and Coco. And so I just want to quickly go over some of the additional incredible opportunities that are unparalleled that SCAD that we offer to our alumni. We have the annual alumni awards. We have the distinguished and emerging, emerging alumni award. We have SCAD art cells where our artists are exhibiting and placing art in major corporations as well as private collections. Uh, APRE SCAD, where upon graduation, you can come and, uh, you know, visit with fellow alumni, accelerate your career. And I think acceleration of your career after graduation is a good description for all of these programs, including SCAD Pro. So we have an angel investor fund for our entrepreneurs and investors who graduate from SCAD. 
And, you know, I just want to thank you, President Wallace, for changing so many of our lives by, uh, you know, beginning the university and, you know, changing our lives for the better again with your alumni programming, such as Alumni Atelier, and for overall dispelling the myth of the starving artist. So I want to thank, thank you all for joining us today. Um, positive energy abounds and you know you can look at the chat right now we have a call to action for our alumni you know if you would like to volunteer and mentor there is a link to this incredible new blog resource where you can fill out a form to actually volunteer and so I would like to uh, you know just thank Grace Kimberly with Career and Alumni Success and you know just let's all keep paying it forward and please reach out to us with any and all admissions, uh, alumni, alumni at questions. So wishing everybody a beautiful and safe day.